Hello, and welcome to a new series where I use video games as an excuse to do research on random things that will never serve me any purpose in my life. In fact, all of this useless knowledge is probably deleting information in my brain that I actually need. Like how to do my taxes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding, of course. I never knew how to do my taxes. Last year, one of the biggest games to come out was called Control. Remedy's latest title had you playing as a woman who somehow finds herself as the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. It's basically a top-secret government agency that deals with the supernatural, and the director has amazing powers as a result. The Bureau, also called the Oldest House for reasons unknown, is ever-changing. There's no logic involved in the way it operates, and yet there is a proverbial method to the madness. This, among many other things, has reminded me of the artist M.C. Escher. Now, it seems every time I bring him up, and yes, that does happen quite a lot, there is always someone who has never heard of him. So, this is M.C. Escher. These are his dates, for those who care. For those who don't, please stay tuned. I promise this video will get entertaining at some point. Like that. Escher never saw the normal, everyday things. Instead, he saw what they could be, or, well, physically couldn't be, but should be. Not to say he didn't do any realistic pieces, he absolutely did, but that's just not at all what he's known for. If you are wondering what the hell this crazy woman is still going on about, then allow me to make things a little bit clearer. You know his work. You may not know you do, but at some point you've definitely come across it. One of his most famous works was even used at night at the museum. Basically, the point I'm trying to make here is that he is still relevant, not just in the world of art and mathematics, but in cultural, day-to-day -day life. He also happens to be my favorite artist, but that's neither here nor there. Now, if you're still here, congrats on that, by the way, then you may have noticed that I have purposely avoided using the word drawing to describe his work. The number one reason for that would be that they aren't drawings. They are lithographs, woodcuts, mezzotints, among other things. He also did watercolors and etchings and things like that. But these three are not common knowledge outside of art. Or at least I was unfamiliar with them, and therefore I decided everyone else was as well. So of course I looked up what they were and what the differences were between them, because of course I did. But don't worry, I won't bore you with all of that now. They're all similar in how they're done. They each require drawing or carving the image backward on a different medium, like stone, wood, or metal, respectively, and then transferring the mirror image over to paper with ink. You guys have now seen a lot of his work over the course of this video so far, and you might know why Plank Control has reminded me of him. Or maybe not, you think I've lost my mind. But take a look at this picture used to promote the game versus this piece. There's definitely a similarity as far as I'm concerned. I grant you it's a little more MC Escher meets the Twilight Zone, but the connection is still there. Comparing it to individual works isn't really fair, however. They didn't try to recreate a world based on his work. Although that would be an awesome game. Imagine how amazing that game would be. Try solving a puzzle involving this waterfall. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop thinking about this because it's all I want now. Anyway. Control. The whole aesthetic of this game is reminiscent of MC Escher. Just look at the ashtray maze. This is an MC Escher wet dream. And I bet you didn't expect to hear that phrase today. Everything in this world is weird. Non-Euclidean, if you will. And if you've seen my Q&A, you'll get why I used that. But though The Oldest House is enough to make any physicist break down into tears, there is a sense of order about it. Everything looks like it could be possible, yet impossible at the same time. And yes, I am aware that makes no sense whatsoever. This is one of Escher's pieces that depicts what I'm trying to say far better than I am able to. At first glance, it looks normal, albeit a little weird, but nothing physics-defying. Until you look at it for just a few seconds, and you realize it's a Penrose staircase. You may have heard of this before if you've ever seen the movie Inception. Joseph Gordon-Levitt explains it far better than I will, but this is the gist of it. Roger Penrose, along with his father, Lionel, invented the staircase in 1958. 
The idea is that you would start climbing the stairs and end up in the exact same place you started, even though you only climbed upward. The same would be true going down the staircase. It's completely impossible, but if you looked at it from above, that's the illusion it would give. In 1960, Escher made this lithograph, so it seems as soon as he heard of this staircase, it inspired him. Which is quite fitting, since Penrose cited Escher as an inspiration for the staircase to begin with. It makes sense that they became friends after this. So to all the schools out there cutting funding for the arts, take note. They always give the bullshit reason as art having no practical use in the real world. Yet here we have a mathematician and physicist using artwork to explore the possible and impossible limits of our world. Remember that the next time you ask an art student what they're going to do with their lives. Seriously, don't be that person. What I am attempting to say, in the most roundabout way possible apparently, is that everything in the impossible constructions of MC Escher and Control is very precise. It seems that everything is done as accurately as possible, and yet is still unrealistic. There's mathematical understanding far beyond my comprehension in every polygon in this world, but used in the most creative way imaginable. The same can be, and indeed has been said, about MC Escher as well. If you're still wondering why you needed to know this, I will tell you. It's more than just control. I already brought up Night at the Museum, but this is one of the promotional posters, for God's sake. And yes, I only brought it up again so that I could include a picture of Dan Stevens in a video. Damn, he's handsome. Wait, what was I talking about? Right, MC Escher. You can also see his work used in Sherlock Gnomes every time he goes into his own head. And bear with me for a second. Dishonored. Dishonored 2, to be exact. Look at Jindosh's mansion and tell me that this physics-bending, mind-melting place would still exist if it hadn't been for MC Escher. With the touch of a switch, everything moves and shifts to become something else. Floors can become stairs, walls become floors. It's so bizarre and brilliant. You can even see it in American McGee's Alice in Looking Glass Land to an extent. And no, it's not just because everything is in black and white, though it doesn't hurt. There are multiple reasons to talk about this area of the game. The sky, the buildings, the labyrinth of hallways and doors. But also, it gave me an excuse to go back and play the best section of the game. I mean, you turn into different chess pieces. Look upon the glory of this level! Do you see all this as well? Or do you think I'm crazy? If it's the latter, I hear straitjackets are comfortable. There's always a silver lining. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and whether or not you found this interesting or boring. If you want to know more, or you think you might ever need this information for something, there are links down in the description where I found everything in this video. I hope one day I help you ace a paper. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more nonsensical videos just like this one.